do you say to yourself when you're cleaning? I know you talk to yourself. All house cleaners do this, although many do not want to admit it. I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Now, a few years ago, I made a tape and it's called The New Tape. And it's actually a tape that I encourage you to listen to every night when you go to sleep. It's an eight hour tape and it only plays positive affirmations in your mind over and over and over and over and over again. The reason I created it is this. As house cleaners, we are inside people's homes and oftentimes the people are gone. So we're cleaning all day and we're left to, this is really frightening, our own thoughts. Now, many house cleaners have a tendency to replay in their minds over and over again what's already in their minds. So if you don't feed your mind with new stuff, what happens is you can only replay old tapes. It's like having a bookshelf of old CDs and you don't have streaming service. So nothing new is coming in. You can only watch the old tapes or the old CDs that are on your shelf, okay? So what happens is we play these old tapes over and over and over again. And if we came from an unfortunate situation in our past that either suggested we weren't good enough or maybe we didn't have enough information or that we were never going to amount to something or if someone said something mean to us, we have a tendency to replay that over and over and again in our heads. Unfortunately, and this is where it gets really sticky, sticky alert, this is where we jump on social media and we banter with perfect strangers that we don't know. And someone will bark at us and they say something that's mean or unkind. And then we go about our business, fixing meals and cleaning house and doing all these things. And we re keep replaying the conversations over and over in our heads. We wish we would have said something different or we're trying to figure out why did they say that? Like they don't know us. Why are they saying stuff like that? And we have these arguments in our heads with invisible people that we don't know that we've never met as if their opinions of us mattered. News alert, they don't. They don't matter at all, okay? So what happens is there we are stuck in our own heads replaying broken tapes. <laughs> Why? Why do we do that? Okay, so I want us to stop that for just a second. Now, when I made this new tape, there were a lot of people that came and said, I would like to make my own tape. How do I do that? And I must have answered this question at least 300, maybe 500 times. And then it just occurred to me, we need to just have this conversation. So here's the conversation. If you're going to make a tape, and I recommend that you do, it should be in your own words. Why your own words? Because your unconscious mind recognizes your voice. It's known your voice for as long as you've been alive, and your voice has the highest level of authority in your own brain than any other voice. Okay, your own voice matters. So what I want you to do is grab your phone, your smartphone. There are apps on the smartphone that record your voice. So you can hit the record button and you can make a tape. You can save it right there in your phone and you can play it over and over and over and over again. Now, what do you say to yourself on the tape? Well, the good news is you can say whatever you want. You can make your tape say whatever you want. That's the coolest part. What I recommend you do is spend some time. And you can make several tapes if you want. I did this one year. I made several different tapes. And what I did is I focused on every area of my life. So I broke it down and I'm a simple person. I have 12 months in a year. So I broke it down into 12 different areas. So if my finances were a part of my life, that would be one month. So I, I created what was called financial wellness. And that was one month. The next month it was emotional wellness. The next month it was spiritual wellness. The next month it was family wellness. And then all the way through educational wellness and business wellness and whatever. Okay, so there were 12 different areas and I broke down each of those areas like in the perfect world, a perfect world scenario, what would my life look like? And I wrote down all my dreams and all my aspirations and then I put them in terms as if I had already accomplished them. What that looks like is I'm 100% debt free. I live in a beautiful house on the outskirts of town with a really green yard, beautiful rose gardens, whatever. And you paint a picture, okay? And you act as if you already have that. And the reason being is because what you're doing is you're going to start replacing and weeding out and squishing out all of the other things 
They say, I'll never live in a house like that. I'm not good enough. I can't afford a place like that, right? You're going to squish out all of those negative beliefs. and You're going to paint a new picture with new beliefs. And what happens is the more times you say it over and over and over again, the more you start to believe it. It's not that you're lying to yourself and it's not that you're trying to trick yourself into anything, but what it is doing is it's squishing out all the bad stuff and it's laying a new foundation. Now, imagine for a second that you went outside in your yard and you got a great big backyard with a bunch of weeds and rocks and there's nothing cool going on back there and you decide you're gonna build a swimming pool. So you grab a shovel and you start digging and now you have a big hole. It's nothing but a hole. And now you say, well, there's this crappy hole in my backyard and you can reinforce that. Or you can look at that hole and you can say, that is my swimming pool. I have a swimming pool. Okay, well, right now there's nothing except a hole. It's still a crappy hole, but in your head, that's your swimming pool. That's where the swimming pool goes. You're digging a hole, you're building a foundation, that's your swimming pool. And you go inside and you say, I have a swimming pool. And your family looks outside and they're like, I, I don't see it. Yeah, that's my swimming pool. So one day you go out and you take the garden hose and you fill it up and it fills up with water and now you can see the potential of it. And you're like, yes, I have a swimming pool. Okay, well, after a couple of hours, the water sinks back into the ground and it's really not a swimming pool, but you could say, well, oh geez, that didn't work. So I tried it and it didn't work. Well, that sucks and now I'm done with the swimming pool, right? Or you could say, no, that's my swimming pool. And you still have the hope and you're fostering the care that is my swimming pool. That's where my swimming pool goes. And in your mind, you envision what the swimming pool looks like. And you imagine there's a cool slippery slide and there are lawn chairs around the side. Maybe there's a big umbrella. And you can imagine that, imagine that there's a barbecue grill and a little bar where you're gonna be serving yourself some lemonade. And you just have this vision of what your backyard is going to look like. And so you keep telling your family, I gotta go out and work on the pool. That's my pool. Okay, what happens after a while is your family starts going, okay, she's out working in the pool. And they start accepting the fact that now you have a swimming pool, right? Everybody knows it's a swimming pool in progress. It doesn't look like a swimming pool yet. But what happens is once you tell yourself, I have a swimming pool, and you hold fast to that belief, and your family starts to go, okay, well, she's out working on the swimming pool, they might think it's crazy at first. But what happens is maybe one day they come out and they grab a shovel and they start helping you, okay? What happens then is all of a sudden, everything that you're telling the universe is I have a swimming pool in my backyard. So what happens now is if anything triggers along that way, you're gonna start recognizing it as for you. You go out and you get what we know as junk mail and you open the junk mail and what do you see? There's a landscaping company and they install swimming pools and they lay concrete and suddenly you go, whoa, I forgot about the concrete or I didn't know about the concrete. That is what keeps the water from sinking in the ground. So you call them up and you say, hey, how much for the swimming pool? And they say, oh, it's like a whole lot of money. Okay, maybe you don't have a whole lot of money yet, but in the back of your mind, without wavering, you say, oh, I have a swimming pool. I, I, I'm gonna get me one of those. And so you keep saying to yourself, I have a swimming pool, I have a swimming pool, I have a swimming pool. Maybe you take a few dollars off of each job and you put it away in a swimming pool fund until magically one day, Lo and behold, you have enough money to pave the bottom of your swimming pool and now you have a swimming pool, okay? So it's little things that start triggering in your life that start happening, that start falling into place, that start coming to you because all of a sudden you've pushed out everything that says, I got a crappy hole in my backyard, I have a swimming pool. And one day you go outside, now you have a beautifully paved swimming pool and it has all these beautiful blue glass tiles on the inside. And when the water goes inside the swimming pool, not only does it stay in there, but it glistens against the sun. And you've got this beautiful, gorgeous pool. And then all of a sudden, family members start giving you lawn chairs. And then your brother-in-law, who's taken up a, a beautiful brick-laying business, he comes in and he builds you that barbecue grill with a little bar where you can give yourself uh, lemonades, right? So all of a sudden, people start to help you because now they also are a participant in your vision. You've crystallized what your vision is and now it's become a part of you and it's become a part of the world around you. So what you've done is you didn't lie to yourself. What you did is you reframed your belief system so that things could start happening the way that you have envisioned them. So if you have crappy things happening in your life, it's okay to stop those broken tapes and to create some new tapes that will serve you for the rest of your life. The reason that I bring this up is because you have a choice of what you think about all day, every single day, and all night while you're sleeping, right? 
you have a choice. And so my suggestion is to make a tape in first person. I am, I have, as if you have already accomplished it. And if you already have accepted that into your life and then listen to it over and over and over and over again. And it can be as whimsical and as fun and as zany as you want it to be. Because what you're doing in essence is you're taking control of your life. Now, the cool part is this, it's been 20 years since I've created these tapes. And the cool part is all the places I was gonna travel, I've actually been. I've been all around the world now and I've gone to all those places. The house that I created for myself, I now live in. The vehicles that I was one day gonna have, they're outside in my garage right now. The business that I was gonna have, I have right now. The reason being, I'm not telling you this to say, oh, I'm, I'm braggadocious and all these things have happened to me. What I'm saying is if you reframe the things that you think about and you hold fast to those things and you listen to them over and over and over again and you push out all other possibilities, the only thing that's left for you is the success that you have created for yourself. And when it starts finding its way to you in little bits and pieces, it's gonna come easy and effortlessly and naturally. And then all of a sudden, all the people around you are gonna start giving you referrals and start sending things to you, start giving you suggestions and ideas, and it's gonna fall naturally into place. And then when it arrives, it's not gonna be like, oh, oh no, I don't deserve that. No, you've been telling yourself every day, I do deserve that. I've been looking for that. I'm glad this finally arrived. Yes, this is what we've been hoping for. And then when it arrives, you're like, but of course, of course, I was expecting you, come on in. All right, that's how that works. If you have questions or comments, those go in the notes below. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.